Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. My partner, Art Kirsch, and I are pleased to present our favorite love coach, Michelle Fabrega. Michelle, great to see you again. Great to be here. Thank you, John. Hello, Art. Hi. You know, Michelle, you were talking about um, lots of ways to handle relationships and cute little sayings. Uh, but the one thing that I, you mentioned that I really need more information about is the three R's. What does reading, writing, and arithmetic have to do with a <laughs> oh, love no. relationship? No. <laughs> well, I, I kind of thought it was a little cute to say roles, rules, and responsibilities. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> and the idea of, you know, the importance, basically, of renegotiating roles, rules, and responsibilities in any relationship, but in particular, a long-term relationship. Hmm. Yep. Because things change. Yes, exactly. And um, also, like, basically, you know, there were... You know, essentially, it's, it's good to do it on a regular basis, but especially if there's any kind of transition. So, um, you know, maybe a move or an illness or a change in, um, you know, uh, maybe a relative moves in or moves out or you get a new pet. You know, anytime the household kind of shifts around, maybe there's an employment change. Maybe somebody's suddenly retired. So it's always a good idea at these junctures in particular to really look at, you know, what, how are each of us contributing to our household and, you um, How's it working for us, right? You know, and maybe just because one person's always done this, um, the other person think it's, it's, it's all good. I'm I'm fine with that. But you know what? It's not always going to work for everybody over time. Yeah, I I, I I think there there are circumstances where uh, people get tired of their roles. They've been doing their role um, not because they love it, you know, or it's innately something they would do. They're doing it because it needs to be done. And uh, they get tired of it. They want to change. They haven't said anything about it yet. So you need that communication is really important, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, because I like to say that, you know, a relationship needs to serve the people in the relationship. You know, it's not the other way around, right? right. It, it, the whole point of a relationship is to, to be a joyful companion space for the people. And, and everybody, of course, every relationship has its own um, maybe specifics about why why we're together, right? Why any couple is together, sure. but, um, but it's yeah. Really, but it's, so in terms, yeah, it's, it's really ahead. nice to get back to something where we could talk about something that is potentially explosive in a relationship, uh, <laughs> as opposed to just you know all kumbaya. So um, <laughs> the pandemic is a, uh, is a good example, even of uh, a long term committed relationship. So maybe you have somebody come help with the cleaning from time to time and things like that, and all of a sudden you don't want them in or they can't come in because of, of COVID, you stop with that. So all of a sudden you're doing roles that you didn't do before. But I think it, it, uh, what you triggered with me is that sometimes what happens is you sort of get like assigned a role, who takes out the garbage, you know, who uh, unloads, <laughs> who unloads the dishwasher uh, and things like that. So. Uh, so does it pay to just explode someday and then have a conversation? <laughs> How do you recommend you go about that? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, basically, it's just it can be just very casual. And it can be, you know, depending on the circumstance. You know, I, here's an example. Like, you know, now that you're not working full time anymore, and I am, I was wondering if we could talk about the shared responsibilities of our life and look at what makes sense now, um, when is a good time we could talk about this? How, how about something like, uh, uh, if you were waiting for the dishwasher to be unloaded, how long do you have to wait? How much patience do you have? Do you think that <laughs> might be an approach? <laughs> well, we'll get to actually, we'll, we'll get to something a little later because I want to talk about that uh, approach. It's not quite like that. It's a little tweaks there. But but basically, yeah, so you bring it up and you make a plan, you schedule the time and you make it happen. And and this can be, a, you know, can happen over time, this discussion. And obviously you might do some trial and error. Well, I don't really like doing that. Well, I don't like the way they do the job of this. So I'd rather do it myself. And, you know, so it's not a one and done thing, but it's something to definitely address. Address, excuse me. Yeah. And so, you know, basically a dynamic relationship is, is so much more likely to be sustaining to each person 
and and sustainable, something that people can continue to be in over the long over the long term, right? So, and we all know that you know the only thing constant is change. So we really need to keep current with each other and the responsibilities that each partner you know is shouldering. Yeah. And okay, what, what do you do if your? Oh, go ahead. I, I know, say, what do you do if your partner say, doesn't want to make any changes? <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's yeah. where I was going. Yeah. Well, then yeah. they probably need you. Well, yes. However, there's some things you could do before that. I mean, yeah, sure. Reach out to someone like me, a coach or counselor to support you in that. But, but the first thing you can choose to do is that decide for yourself if they don't want to make any changes or they, you try to make changes and they don't really follow through, this is an opportunity for you to hold your ground with firmness yet compassion. So what I mean by that is like, you know, something like, you know, I understand you're, you know, you're happy with the way things are now, but it's not working for me. And when I see you watching TV or when I see you go play golf all day and I'm home doing these chores, I, I get, I start to feel resentful. So I, I think I'm sure we could find an arrangement, but are you willing to try? And essentially you're basically, you know, going a little further, you know, and if they're not willing to negotiate, it's time for you to decide for yourself what you're willing to do and not do. Okay. So obviously if they're not willing to negotiate, that's kind of a, uh, warning, you know, warning sign in your relationship. Do they not care about your needs? Are they not responsive to you? But, but one of the things you can do is that you actually decide for yourself what, like, let's say you've been doing the laundry for, you know, both of you for years. And you're just like, you know what, with kindness and compassion, you tell your partner, you know what, I'm sorry, but I've decided that I'm only going to be doing my laundry from now on. And I know I've been doing it in the past, but I don't really have the bandwidth anymore. And I'd like you to step up. And so anyway, I just want to let you know that from now on, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, yeah, so you say it with clarity and yet kindness, and then you see what happens. Yeah. Um, and, and if you do things with clarity and kindness, I think more often than not, that probably works out, but not always. There's no guarantee, is there? Right, right. There's no guarantee. But but the key is that when you, you know, because obviously we know that nagging doesn't help, right? And that's just, that's just a really uh, unpleasant for both people. You know, it's no fun to be the nagger because I've been that in the past. And um, and it's no fun to be the naggy, if that's a word. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, but you really, yeah, you need to hold the line with compassion. And, um, and often, you know, the person will come around. But obviously sometimes they don't. And if they don't, it's time to, you know, get some help from a coach or counselor to really um, to look at this situation. Cause obviously um, your partner's up being very responsive to you about this and it's going to be, it's an ongoing thing. That's not, that's not resolved yet. It needs, needs resolution. Well, I'll, I'll tell you uh, just to make you feel good uh, for anybody who has a laundry thing. My wife and I have uh, refused to let the other one do their laundry forever. Okay. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. you know, I like cold water. She likes hot water. She likes to separate everything. I just throw it in. Okay? <laughs> so we're really happy. She's assigned uh, me uh, certain bins to put my stuff in. And she can separate out a preliminary separation for hers. So for laundry, uh, Michelle, you have some competition because I, I am the, the laundry coach. Yeah, I guess it sounds like, but, but geez, it sounds like you're not very compatible laundry wise. huh? <laughs> no, we're very compatible. She does hers. I do mine. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You. yeah. Right. I mean, there are many ways to divide things up. Right. And, um, but I, that was an example, obviously, but it's like, you just decide and you make, you make a firm, but kind, uh, explanation and then you just hold it and, yep. um, and see what happens. And see what happens. Yeah. yeah, it can take time, but it's okay. You just hold it with kindness, and um, yeah, sure. while those while those dishes pile up in the sink for a week or two. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Just hold your hold your position. Yeah, sure. No, <laughs> I can see the wisdom of that though, because uh, what you're trying to do is avoid the explosion. Yeah, yeah, and you're making sure you're taking care of your own needs too. Like sure. you're not just giving in and doing it and getting frustrated. You're just, you know, I, 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 I see them piling up, but this is what we decided and we're each going to do our own, you know, whatever you agree. You need to, yeah, get come together on that. But it, it yeah. um, yeah. Well, when any time 
uh, a couple has an unspoken uh, relationship. Uh, you know, who does the dishes, who does the laundry, how do you do the laundry? Um, that can work great if they both are on the same wavelength, but if they are not, you need to communicate. You need to say, as you said, set a plan, talk about it, uh, figure it out, break yeah. up the responsibility, and uh, and change roles if you need to. Yeah, right, absolutely. Michelle, at what point do we bring in the professional? Yeah, and I'm assuming you're meaning a professional like a coach or counselor, not, not the cleaning person, right? <laughs> That's another option, yeah. Um, well, I would say, you know, whenever you feel you need support around this, because some people might, this is not an easy thing that I'm suggesting is to just with kindness decide what you're going to do and not do and hold the line, right? And um, so whenever you feel like, wow, this relationship, is this working for me? Am I feeling like my partner's responsive to me? Is our household in harmony the way I want it to be? Is my partner not willing to communicate with me? You know, these are all challenges, right, that need attention. And sometimes it's about, you know, it doesn't mean the relationship is doomed. I mean, it, it can be that, but more likely there's ways to work with, you know, what's going on with your communication with each other. So yeah, talk to someone like me, a coach or a counselor to support you in making these adjustments, right? Sometimes we're at a point in the relationship, it, it just, it needs some, you know, some support to move along to a better place, right? Good advice. Good advice and good to know that uh, there's somebody who can help if we can't do it ourselves. So there are six R's. There's reading, writing, arithmetic, <laughs> rules, roles, responsibilities, <laughs> or something like that. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.